hi guys welcome back to the web this is our tech segment and we're gonna look at intel and mac right now honestly intel is in a lot of hot water let's dive into it this is from the new york times and i love to state that where certain articles are from it i'm gonna make it as quickly and short and spicy as possible guys let's dive into it is it a good idea to buy an intel mac right now probably not in november 2020 apple began making a big change to its mac lineup although macs have used processors from intel since 2006 new macs from here on out will feature apple designed chips like the ones in iphones and ipads Apple says that using its own Apple Silicon chips will improve performance and battery life for Macs and provide less tangible benefits relating to security and privacy. This transition started with the MacBook Air, a 13 inch MacBook Pro and the Mac Mini and Apple expects its full lineup of Max to complete the changeover within the next two years. This is the start of a year-long transition period during which Apple will support both Intel Macs and Apple Silicon Macs with new features and software updates for a while before eventually dropping Intel Mac support in favor of focusing on newer faster models with its own chips. So the question is, in the early phase of this transition, when some Intel Macs are still hanging around, but Apple Silicon Macs aren't all here yet, is it still a good idea to spend money on an Intel Mac? The short answer is yes, if you need one. The long answer is, is it depends. We'll do our best to help you make that decision and we'll continue to update this guidance. What's the problem? Apple's processors and Intel's processors can't just run the same software. Each uses a different instruction set, meaning that software needs to talk to them in different ways to get them to perform the same task. Because of this, software developers will need to do extra work to optimize their applications to run well on both Intel and Apple processors. Eventually, as Intel Max age and Apple Silicon Max become more prevalent, those developers may stop working to make their apps run on Intel Max. If you have been using Max since the turn of a millennium, you might remember something similar happened when Apple transitioned from PowerPC chips to Intel processors in the mid late 2000. All right guys, so they hit a big one. Apple's processors and Intel processors can't run the same software. Each uses a different instruction set. That instruction set it and the software communicates hardware software you get that guys all right let's move on our long-standing advice to people who need a new computer right now this minute is to buy one there's always something new coming around the corner but you never know how long you will need to wait for it or what features it will include Intel Max don't suddenly become bad that Apple is changing processors and they'll be supported with new software updates for years to come. Apple won't say exactly how many years that is. But Macs typically receive new software updates for 6 or 7 years after their release and security patches for a couple of years after that. Who should buy or at least consider an Apple Silicon Mac? If you just want a basic MacBook Air for everyday use and won't be making extensive use of pro apps like Adobe Photoshop, Lightroom or Premiere, 
you should definitely buy a new Apple M1 MacBook Air and avoid Intel models. You'll benefit from the improved performance and great battery life, and you mostly won't notice the speed penalty from running Intel apps only. For Mac models that have both Apple and Intel versions available, like the 13 inch MacBook Pro and the Mac Mini, it depends on how much you need a new computer and what type of things you'll be doing on it. The Apple M1 models will generally be faster, should get software updates for longer, but Pro apps from companies like Adobe won't run as well until updated versions are released, and we don't know how long that will take. The Intel models will run all Mac apps well, both now and for the foreseeable future, but they may get fewer Mac OS updates over time. If you don't need something right now, you might be better off waiting for apps to update. One thing that Apple Silicon Macs will be able to do that Intel Macs can't, download and run iOS and iPad OS apps and games directly from the App Store. Software developers can already get their iPad apps running as Mac apps that will work on Intel or Apple chips, but it requires extra effort that most developers haven't put out. Right now, it's hard to think of an iOS or iPad OS app that would be worth delaying a Mac purchase. Most productivity apps are already available on both, and the Mac specific versions will still work better with a keyboard and mouse and be more consistent with the rest of your Mac apps. But it's an intriguing option for a phone or tablet games. It's likely to be just the first of a steadily growing list of things that Apple Silicon Macs can do that Intel Macs can't. All right, guys, that's it. Thank you so much for listening. Hopefully you guys were informed and you guys actually can make a decision based off what is just said. I will see you guys in the next one. Peace out.